Bringing land and sea together is about harmonizing land and sea data that would improve safety at sea, environmental protection, and aid socioeconomic development in the North Sea region. Presently, North Sea countries manage geographic data independently and there is little integration of geographic data over land and sea. Work Package 3 will identify and integrate geographic data sets. Without the sea, we have a seamless surface, but if we were to map it, what should we include as a minimum and how can this data be provided? As a start, we need three things to be included elevation, topology, and geology. Elevation is simply the changes in height over the seabed. This data is primarily captured for the purpose of navigation. Seabed elevation capture is focused around commercial shipping routes where safety of navigation is critical because of its relatively high costs. Topology is concerned with the features that make up the surface of the seabed. As with elevation, this data is also captured for the purpose of navigation. Its navigation focus means its usefulness is limited for other application areas. Geology is the sediments and bedrock. Typically, a national geological survey captures the marine bedrock and sediments. However, the data specifications for bedrock and sediments differ. We have three key challenges to address to bring the land and sea together. Differences in approach between data collected for land and data collected for sea results in the lack of seamless join between datasets at the coastline. Where the data is collected to well-defined standards, the differences can be easily corrected. In addition to the differences in data collection methods, the intertidal area is difficult to capture due to a limited temporal window governed by tides. As a result, the intertidal presents itself as a strip of no data when the datasets are to be combined. Despite marine data being captured and managed to a single standard, there are ongoing challenges as to how datasets match at the offshore boundaries between neighboring nations. This situation is apparent in the North Sea as well as in other parts of the world. Work Package 4 tasks are to develop navigational tools that can enhance safety at sea. One tool is a 3D model and this model was tested in Belgium. Now we're actually testing it for the first time in real life. We have a uh, a piece of uh, 3D chart uh, over Seebrücke with the, the approach, uh, the channel into Seebrücke. And right now we are uh, with the Belgium Hydrographic Service uh, survey ship Terstrep on the way up to the Zulu Boy outside uh, Seebrücke. And we will try and follow the leading line on the 3D chart, entering the port and take us to one of the keys. The background for creating the 3D model came with the aftermath of a major accident that took place in Norway on board the passenger ship Sleipner in 1999. Although they had all the technological equipment available to them, they still didn't manage to find the right course for those couple of seconds that were they needed it. So, so I thought, would there be some way of displaying uh, navigational information in a way that uh, they could recover with sort of if they are in a stressed situation and forget everything they learn, can they recover just by using their gut feeling? It's very simple. It's like a, it's like a 3D game, you can say. It's, it's what, what you see is exactly what you see outside the window. But then we add navigational information. Uh, like, for example, we have uh, lines on the water that you follow. And these lines are uh, actually the leading lines from two, two lights that you have uh, on the shore. But in bad visibility, for example, you don't see that, those lights. But in the 3D chart, you have the line actually physically on the water. So you just follow the line, to say it simply. The 3D model was tested in a simulator at Antwerp Maritime Academy, 
given a perfect opportunity to test the 3D navigation techniques under different conditions. I built an exercise entering the port of Seebrugge with a lot of current outside of the breakwaters and then building up wind as well. Um, and with a lot of fog, so the visibility was almost nothing. The captain who did the exercises had almost no other use but the normal radar and the 3D, 3D radar from uh, Mr. Porat. On a normal ship you would never enter uh, the port of Seebrugge without tugboats. And here we were able to just try it. If you have a collision, it's okay, you can, you can learn from your mistakes or it's... it's it's okay that it happens in real life. You, you won't take the risks that you are okay with taking here. The 3D model is never supposed to be an, uh, uh, instead of the... Uh, yeah, it's not really field. navigation or for... Uh, it, it's well, manu uh, not for maneuvering. For not for maneuvering and not for planning uh, or judging distances. It, it's, more like a, it's more like a tactical display. The 3D model proved useful. The feedback from the navigating officers showed the need for a feature that will display the contours of the ship's hull and heading, in addition to the fairway. This and other helpful comments and features is a must from a navigational point of view and will be included in the next iteration of the 3D chart. Work Package 5 is connected to the North Atlantic Information Management Centre the centre was established by the Norwegian Coastal Administration in 2010. The task of the uh, Work Package 5 is to exchange uh, maritime information, especially AIS information, between the countries in the region. So we can have an early warning or we can be uh, prepared as soon as possible if something goes wrong or something happens uh, out there in the regional common water. See, there is a lot of observe. There's a lot of traffic out there uh, with uh, different uh, types of vessels. And if we, for instance, uh, choose one of those vessels, we've got more information about the vessel. This is a vessel from Norway, and we can uh, scroll down to links to other lists. For instance, uh, here you can see it's an offshore vessel. Initially, we were tasked with uh, developing this monitoring and exchange center with everything that involves. After some careful consideration, we um, decided not to invent any new wheels, uh, but rather to, to uh, use the existing wheels that, that's, um, that's out there already. So, and, and to assemble them into a vehicle which we now have and, and which we now call the North Atlantic Information Management Center. For the purpose of visualization, we have chosen to, to use uh, an existing uh, VMS-based geographical software. The, uh, the web application that I'm talking about visualizes the um, ship on a geographical background. Uh, geographical in the sense of maps. And the, the system is kind of uh, is, is very flexible and, and are able to display, in principle, any kind of map. I'm also convinced that our uh, VMS-based platform are a very suitable platform uh, to integrate deliverables from the other work packages in the BLAST project. Maritime traffic information is important for vessel traffic monitoring centers like the one at Quitsoy. A VTS is a traffic center that monitors all traffic or about one specific size and uh, give information and uh, tell the ships how to sail in difficult uh, situations. They also give clearance to all the vessels that want to come into the area and have uh, the overview over all traffic that is in the specific area. We have in the log approximately 10,000 information a year to vessels. Uh, we have approximately uh, 3,000 times we uh, are active going in to um, regulate the traffic. And we have about uh, 10 to 14 uh, serious near misses in the area. The IS can uh, 
can give us early warning about what is going to happen. Uh, it gives us information of the course of the speed and also the destination, so you, lo you know a lot about the vessel before you go in and give it information on the further sailing. Un unfortunately, there are no worldwide standard for, um, for information and exchange centers like we have today. Maybe in the future, with e-navigation, we will have um, these kind of standards. You had to, in some way, uh, build up some structures that give you all, all the uh, marine authorities the possibility to have the same picture. That means all the same uh, parts of what's going on. Work package six is gathering information to get an overview of how the planning authorities operate in the different countries. What we try to do is uh, merge that together and based on that uh, developing a kind of decision support system which supports the different planners in the different countries in uh, planning the use of uh, the coast around Europe, both now but uh, specific in the future because we will see the climate uh, will change and the effects of that we'll have to adapt to. So that's what we are planning to do in WP6. We are giving advice to many different kind of uh, people in Denmark that are dealing with the coasts and uh, we would like to be able to answer some of their questions and uh, BLAST was a per perfect uh, platform for doing that. So you can see in this area how the flooding uh, probability will increase with increased sea level rise and we have all the uh, indicators urbanization we have uh, tourism we have uh, coastal stability now there's dry but it has rained a lot in Denmark so the coast uh, coastal cliffs will become more and more unstable and uh, we have erosion indicators we have uh, uh, some very uh, good indicators on the impact of climate change on our coasts. I like to see that uh, we, have, uh, we have developed a system that uh, I think will be of good use because it's, uh, it's based on open source so everyone can uh, enjoy for free. You can put your own data in which uh, gives you uh, a, pro or a possibility to adapt it to whatever your country's uh, problems or challenges is. We have also made an overview of the, the different uh, planning uh, regulations uh, that are in the different countries addressing that we, we need these uh, pan-European projects to learn from each other and also address uh, a broader range of, of uh, challenges um, that goes with uh, climate change. So uh, I think that's uh, the most important things we've got out of participating in, uh, in BLAST. I can see that in BLAST we are, we are bringing the land and sea together, so we don't see uh, the land zone and the sea zone as separate. And I think that will uh, be good in the future because I'll see a more focused, uh, uh, more focus from EU's side on integrated coastal zone management. And such a tool that we develop here uh, and uh, the BLAST project as a whole is a, an integrated project. So I think it's a uh, very good that uh, we now have this uh, project that are addressing that uh, we are integrating both the land, water zone and, and the sea zone. Mm -hmm.